Hello, hi everyone, welcome to my video. In today's video we are going to talk about a DHT11 and an ESP32 C3 uh, controller, microcontroller. And as you can already guess, we will connect the DHT11 to the ESP32. And with that we will uh, read and visualize the data from the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. Since both of the devices are not bigger than a fingerprint, that we will create the world's smallest web server. First of all, we have to understand how the DHT11 sensor works. From the documentation, we can already see some values as uh, what is the range of the humidity measurements, what is the range of the temperature measurement, and what is his specification, so what is the rate of, uh, of, of the punctuality of that sensor. And the next step is to understand the pin setup, because we have four legs on the DHT. If we are looking at the DHT uh, sensor, then uh, we, are, we have to look as left to right, where the first pin is the very left pin of, uh, of that DHT sensor. And the first pin itself is the VCC, uh, and it is working between 3.3 and, uh, and 5 volts. And that's, that's the plus node of the DC circuit. The second uh, pin is the data, where we, uh, where we will read out. The third pin is N slash C, which is meaning as not connected. It is the manufacturer uh, keep that as a future purpose. It is not used at the moment. We are not really caring about. And the fourth pin is the G and D or the ground. So if we have a closer look with the ESP32 C3 Super Mini, we have 5 volt, we have ground, we have 3.3 we have uh, the pins for the data connection. And with that, uh, we can easily mount the DHT sensor on top of the ESP to win some space. And we will modify the legs accordingly to, to that, um, that ESP. Uh, probably I will use some double side tape to, to glue it in, in the back end of that ESP. I have already added the double side tape in the back of the DHT sensor. I am trying to get out the other side and stick that to the ESP. It's not a really big deal, just you have to be careful to keep some space between uh, both of the pin setups and you can easily solder later all the legs for, for that sensor to the ESP. If you don't mind, I will speed up this part a bit for you and enjoy it! As you have seen in the video, I have added also a 10 kilo ohm pull up resistor for the data which is connected between the VCC and the data pin. And now it's time for the coding. So we have to add the SSID and the password. And for the SSID I have chosen as please subscribe. And with that being said, please subscribe. And for the password. I would like to say you big thank you in case if you have subscribed. If not, then also thank you for watching this video because it's very valuable uh, your view for me. 
And let's go quickly through uh, on the code part, which I have pre-written. Um, we have the web server configuration, we have the DHT configuration, and we have everything predefined. So you just have to use and run the code. Uh, I will share the code in the link down below, so you can uh, play around, modify, and uh, do whatever you want because it's it's a free, free for you. After a few try and error, try and error again, uh, I was able to modify the code in which format what I wanted to see, and the code is working. It is downloaded, and let's see the end result of our small project. As you see, the ESP itself, it has been connected to the access points and it has a small web server inside with a web page and we are able to read the data. If we are looking closer the data, we have the real-time values and we have the temperatures, we have the humidity in a, in a chart and uh, the page is also auto refreshing so it is doing a dynamic job to show and visualize the data if you like the video and would you like to see similar videos in the future please like and subscribe your like and subscribe matters a lot thank you very much i wish you a great day